Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Prajarine Nirishe Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're reading the Brihad Bhagavat Amrita and we're on the first chapter of the first section of the Brihad Bhagavatamrita. And Sanatana Goswami has begun by offering obeisances. And we heard how he offered obeisances to Vrindavan, and now he's offering obeisances to Bhakti Devi. <laughs> Bhakti Devi is the personification of devotional service to Lord Krishna and Sanatana Goswami begs for her favour. Haribo? Haribo? Har Krishna. Yeah. Haribo. Yeah. Did we got this can you? I can hear you, yeah. Now I hear you. Oh, okay. Did you hear what I said? Uh, can you repeat the second part? The Bhakti Devi is the personification of and the, the next part is the Sanatana Goswami begs for her favor. Hmm. So, in the purport, it, it is described that uh, Mukti or liberation is herself eager to surrender to Bhakti Devi. Mukti understands or she's realized that Bhakti is superior to her. Actually, devotion or bhakti is the, the essential is the essential teaching of all the vedas so liberation does not accept the spiritual practices that people do to get to get liberation Yeah, people in the different stages of spiritual ashrams, they will do different things to try to achieve liberation. Just like the young brahmacharis, they will practice celibacy and they will also do japa, they will chant the mantras. And 
And the, the married people, the householders, they will do the ritualistic ceremonies. The ritual, they'll perform sacrifices, yagyas. And the people in the Vanaprastha, they go and live in the forest and they will do austerities there. And the people in the sannyas ashram, in the totally renounced order of life, they make a vow never to go back into family life again. So even if somebody properly, if they, if they correctly follow these different duties, still liberation or mukti does not accept them. Haribo? No. No, the voice is breaking. Anyway, you translated, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll go ahead. Haribo. Mm. Okay,没听到我们的那个音音的音。没听到。是是总，呃，行。呃，对，你那段序有点断续。是吧？嗯。那那刚，要不然我把这个话筒拿掉。呃，即便有人他们完全正正确的履行了这些职责的话，解脱
So we may wonder, why does liberation worship the feet of devotional service? So the reason is that liberation wants to get back the shelter of devotional service. The devotees, the Vaishnavas, they don't care for liberation. And so she's nowhere to go. So she's looking for somewhere to find shelter. She's afraid that she might just she might just perish. She might just lose her, lose her life because nobody's taking care of her. Nobody's interested in her. So, to people, to people who make even even a little attempt to surrender to Krishna, liberation gives herself to them. But for the people who are not devotees, who are materialists, they may try very hard to get liberation, but she doesn't give them her favor. So the, the chanting done by the brahmacharis and the sacrifices done by the householders and the austerities done by the vanaprastas and the renunciation by the sannyasis are all useless. They don't get they don't get liberation. So even though they try for liberation by by just by just trying for liberation only because they neglect devotional service, because they don't do any devotional service, they're very unfortunate. And so they fail to understand the real meaning of the scriptures of the Vedas. So we're going to go on now, text number nine. And it's, it's described, all glories, all glories to Lord Krishna in the form of his all ecstatic holy name. Sanatana Goswami describes, if somebody stops meditating and they stop their worship, ritual worship, and they also give up the different so social duties, if they just chant the holy name one time, then they'll get liberation. The, the holy name is the source of eternal happiness. And 
and it's my very life an ornament. So in devotional service, the most important part of devotional service is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Chanting the holy name of the Lord is pure bliss and it makes ecstasy. Chanting the holy name is also uh, it's the essence of ecstasy and it makes everything which we touch, everything which we touch is ex which the holy name touches becomes ecstatic. So the holy name is it actually it's 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 the form of the Supreme Lord. And it shows us his mercy and his attractiveness. So anybody who understands the power of the holy name, then they'll they'll do Harinam rather than other kinds of spiritual practice. And if you try to do duties like according to your ashram, then it's just a lot of trouble. Yeah, when some when we see some when people lose interest in their Vanashram culture, sometimes they do meditation. And the, the meditation may be, it may be done as devotional service, but it may also be done for impersonal perfection. Whatever the reason they're doing meditation, we should understand it's a lot of trouble. It's very difficult because you have to control the mind and the senses. And worshipping the deity is also trouble because the, the, the worshipper he has to purify all the items to be offered. And he has to purify his own heart and his own body also. And other devotional practices are also troublesome. Just to do hearing is not easy. Just do hearing is not just, easy. Just, just to engage ourselves in hearing topics of Lord Krishna is not so easy. Oh, Actually, to hear correctly, to hear correctly, we can do that only after we we've done other diff, other different 
things, some things have to be done to purify ourselves so that we can hear properly. One of the things, one of the difficult things, requires us to find a qualified devotee to hear from. If we don't have the right person to hear from, then it will be very hard for us to hear. So an intelligent devotee will focus his attention more on chanting the holy name. And by focusing on chanting the, on the holy name, he will get the results of all of the other methods. And that is supported by the words of Devahuti, the mother of Lord Kapila, when she was praying to Lord Kapila. Devahuti prayed to Lord Kapila. She was telling Lord Kapila that the holy name of the Lord is very glorious. And any tongue who chants a holy name is very glorious. And even if a person is born in a family which eats dog meat, then these persons are worshipable. People who chant the holy name if they're chanting the holy name, uh, they, then in the past, they must have done all kinds of austerities and performed all kinds of sacrifices. And they must have achieved all the good manners of the Aryans. In order to chant the holy name of the Lord, they must have, in the past, they must have bathed at all the holy places of pilgrimage. And to be chanting the holy name, in the past, they must have studied all the Vedas and done everything which was required. So then, there's another statement to support the chanting of the Holy Name, which is coming from a different book, from the Vishnu Purana. So it's described there that what people did in the Satya Yuga by meditation. Or what he did by meditation. Satya Yuga, Satya Yuga, they just do meditation. So what people okay. achieve in Satya Yuga by meditation? Okay, okay. 
OK， 所以就是在黄金年代的人们，他们就是从事的是冥想的方法。Or in the in the Treta Yuga, they did it by sacrifice, by doing rituals, fire sacrifice. 而在白衣年代的人们，他们是呃靠实施火祭。And in Dwapara Yuga, they did it by worshiping the deity. But in the Kali Yuga, everything is achieved by the loud chanting of the holy names of Keshava. So somebody may be doubt, doubtful about this, and they may question about the case of about about. They may question about how easy is it for a brahmana to to succeed. Somebody may be able to get some religious benefit. Or they may get economic prosperity and material enjoyment by chanting the holy name. Ah, 有的人就是通过唱诵圣名，就可以仅仅唱诵圣名就能得到宗教的好处、经济的繁荣和物质的享受了。But liberation is different from that. 但是解脱却是截然不同的。Liberation can only be gained by people who are are spiritually fit, who are actually qualified. Only those who are spiritually fit, who are actually qualified, are able to get liberation. So, at the best, a devotee who chants the holy name of the Lord with perfect faith and devotion, he may get liberation. But after long practice. 而那些怀着完全的信心，还有怀着奉爱来唱诵圣名的人，他们会得到完美，但是这需要很长的时间。So Sanatana Goswami says this is not true. Sanatana Goswami 他否认了，他说这是的这种说法是不正确的。He says that if anybody Even once chants the holy name of the Lord, even unintentionally, or he may be even joking, or he may be in material distress, but the holy name will bless that person with liberation. 任何人，倘若只是一次唱诵了主的圣名，无论是他是出于。呃，无意识的唱诵的，或者是开玩笑的唱诵，或者是出于痛苦、物质痛苦来唱诵的圣名，这圣名都会祝福那个人得到解脱。So the chanting can be performed without any real realization. 所以，嗯，并不需要得到完全的觉悟之后才可以开始唱诵。Yeah, it it's not going to be the pure name, but it can it, it will be a reflection of the name. It will be the nama bas, the reflection. That, 当然，这样的唱诵它不是纯粹的圣名，它只是影子，圣名的影子 ，nama bas 阶段。But even though it's the pure, it's just the shadow of the name. Still, it will give liberation. That, 即便它只是圣名的影子。And this is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes that a person get as easily gets free from all sinful reactions by chanting the holy name of the Lord. 圣典不教法坛是这样说的：倘若人要唱诵了主的圣名的话，就很容易摆脱罪恶的反应。And he can also chant about the qualities of the Lord or about the activities of the Lord. 而且人也可以唱诵主的呃歌颂主的品质和主的活动。And this is the only way recommended for people to get freed from sinful reactions. 啊，这是。
呃，给那些想要摆脱罪恶活动反应的人们推推荐的唯一的方法。Even if we chant the holy name and our pronunciation is not proper, doesn't matter. 即便我们唱诵圣名的时候，我们的发音并不正确，也没有关系。We'll, we will still get free from bondage in material life. We still can get free from bondage in material life. We still can get free from bondage in material life. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. The main thing is that we should chant without offense. But while he was dying. He chanted the holy name. We can see from Ajamila's life that he was a sinful person. But in his dying, he chanted the Lord's name. So when he was dying, he called his son, and so he got liberation. When he was dying, he called his son, and so he got liberation. When he was dying, he called his son, and so he got liberation. When he was dying, he called his son, and so he got liberation. He got liberation because when he chanted the holy name, he remembered the name of Lord Narayan. So it's really amazing that even a person, he may not, he he, he has. He has nothing to do with. He may have nothing to do with the different positions in society, like brahmachari, grihastha, vanapasanyas. But he can get free from bondage to material life. So this point is very surprising. Even if a person has no connection with the social level, um, um, brahm. 婆罗门、沙地地、瓦沙、舒卓这样的阶层没有关系，他也可以摆脱物质的束缚。So if he's not in any of these varnas or ashrams, it means he's very low class, he's very untouchable, he's very impure, very contaminated by sinful reactions. 倘若人要是不处在这任何一个 varna 或者任何一个 varsham 之中，这就意味着这样的人是非常低等的。But if he utters the holy name of the Lord even once, if he utters the name of the Lord, he can get free of bondage to material life. 倘若他唱诵主的圣名，哪怕是一次，他就能摆脱物质生活的束缚。And if somebody just simply hears the holy name of the Lord only once. Even though he's a very sinful person and he's in a very low position in society, he's of the lowest class. He gets free from all of his contamination. 而且，即便是哪怕人聆听圣名一次，他即便是生呃非常罪恶的地位非常低贱，也是、呃、在社会上有很低的地位，他也能够摆摆脱。And there's another statement from the scriptures. It says that the holy name of Krishna is the sweetest of the sweet. 经典中还有另外一段声明是这样说的：主 Krishna 的圣名是甜美的事物当中最甜美的。And it's the most auspicious of all auspicious things. 它是。Hari Bo, Guru Mani, Hari Bo, Ah, Hari Bo, where are you, Lama? Guru Mani. Hare Krishna, Guru Mani, Madhuri. Hmm. Hare Krishna.
Haribo, good money. Good day. 呃 g o o 再继续重新上线一下。他能听到我们，但是我们听不到他。Hare Krishna。Hare Krishna。嗯，好了好了，现在好了。好了。OK。All right. So there's an, another statement in the scriptures, which describes that Krishna's name is the most auspicious of everything auspicious. 在经典当中有另外一段话说，主 Krishna 的圣名是吉祥的事物中最最吉祥的事物。It's the fruit of all the Vedas, and it's completely spiritual. 它是伟达经的果实。And if anybody chants the name with faith or even with contempt, they can be liberated. 任何人若是怀着信心，甚至是怀着轻蔑的情感唱诵圣名，他也得到了解脱。嗯。So when we chant, we generally think that the chanting is the business of the tongue. 我们念诵的时候，我们只是以为念诵是舌头的事情。But actually, when we chant, all of our different conscious facilities, all of the different conscious parts of our body, can be engaged in chanting the holy name. 实际上，当我们唱诵圣名的时候，我们身体的各个部位的知觉都可以从事于协助唱诵圣名这一过程。The mind. Can think about the different syllables of the holy name, and think. 心意可以想着圣名的不同的音节。And think about their meanings, and they also, the 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 other senses can interact with the holy name. 呃，并且心意可以想着圣名的意思，而其他的感官可以和圣名进行互动。Just like we know, when we chant, we definitely we, it's a part of speech and also hearing. They're obviously part of chanting the holy name. Uh, we commonly You can also use the sense of touch to feel the name, but you have to you have to write the name, write the name in clay or tea like on your body, and then you use your hands. You can touch the holy name. But 同时，我们还可以运用到触觉器官来和圣名进行交流。我们可以用泥土或者是呃。泥土将圣名写在身体上，或者用 tilak 把圣用把圣名标记在身上。这样，当我们唱诵的时候，可以触触碰他们。And it's a good idea to also write the mantra and put it up on the wall, hang it up, write up the letters, the whole mantra, and put it on the wall. And then, when you chant, you can use your eyes to see the different words of the mantra. 还有一个方法就是把这个 mantra 写在墙上，每一个字母它的拼写都写在墙上。写，这样当我们念诵的时候，就可以一边看着这个 mantra 一边念诵。And you can make a you can make a, a banner. You can make a big sign with the holy name with the mantra on it, and then you use your hands and legs to carry it with you. 同时呢，我们也可以用一个，用用一个这个条幅，用个条幅把圣名写下来，然后做一个很大的标记，这样我们可以用手或用手腿来。How to carry the leg? To, yeah, just to carry it. No, you carry. You walk and you carry the leg.、Oh. 这样就是我们我们走动的时候，呃，我们可以用手拿着这个条幅。Okay. So Sanatana Goswami is describing to us his own relationship with the holy name. Sanatana Goswami 接下来描述了
He says, nothing else is important. The holy name is everything for him. He says, the holy name is the nectar of immortality. The happiness of true liberation. And it's many, 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 many times greater than the happiness of liberation. And chanting the holy name is even greater than the happiness of Vaikuntha. It's sweeter than any attractive thing. Sanatana Goswami says the holy name is his very life. It's a reservoir of all auspiciousness. And the focus of his attention. Sonatana Goswami continues, he says, I bow down to Lord Krishna, the bestower of unconditional mercy. And in this age, he, Lord Krishna has appeared as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to distribute the taste of pure love. So Sanatana Goswami is finishing his invocation, the prayers in the beginning, which he offers, and he's offering his respects to his worshipable deity, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the spiritual master, the first spiritual master of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And Lord Chaitanya gives his mercy to all living entities. He doesn't consider who, who deserves it. He gives it whether they deserve it or not. And he gives also, Lord Chaitanya gives about, he gives, allow, he allows people to taste rasa, the intimate emotional exchange between Krishna and his devotees. This is the most rare thing from the spiritual world. And there's only very, very few people in the material world who know what rasa actually is. So there are different varieties of rasa in the spiritual world. But the rasa
Britannia 会面的，在那里他呃 ，Prayag 是恒河与杨木的河交汇的地方，在那里他们共度了十天的光阴。嗯、mm. ，So 呃、uh, ，Sanatana Goswami。Was glorifying Lord Krishna, and he glorified also Lord Krishna's best devotees. Sanatan Goswami, he 荣耀了，既荣耀了主 Krishna， 也荣耀了主 Krishna 最优秀的奉献者。And he glorified the abode of Lord Krishna, Vrindavan. 他荣耀了主 Krishna 的居所 Vrindavan. And we heard how he glorified Bhakti Devi, which means his devotional service, devotional service to Krishna. We listened to he glorified Bhakti Devi. Bhakti Devi is the service of Krishna's devotion. So Sanatana Goswami now tells us about the the theme of his book, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Now Sanatana Goswami is telling us about the theme of his book, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. We should understand this book is not fiction. It's not just a story which he wrote. We must understand this book is not fiction. It's not just a story which he wrote. We must understand this book is not fiction. It's not just a story which he wrote. It's all authoritative. It's authorized, it, and it's taken from the Vedic literatures. 这部书它是有权威性的，它出自于伟达文献。And、we'll, we will learn from this book the real nature of devotional service. 我们会从这部书当中学习到奉爱服务的真正本质。So sometimes this book will quote different texts from other scriptures. 有的时候这部书间或会引述其他。And sometimes it will, it will select sometimes different phrases and different words, and sometimes it may pa paraphrase things in a different way. But we should understand that Sanatana Goswami is a very pure devotee, and he has no material motive. He has fully understood the science of love of Krishna. And he has written this book in the most very beautiful poetry. And he didn't add anything of his own. He did not 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 add anything of his own. 嗯嗯，那些翻译了这部书籍的奉献者，呃，把它翻译成英文的，并且把它做了阐释的奉献者们，希望我们读者能够正确的理解这部书籍。So we should pray to Sanatana Goswami for the spiritual strength to do, to study the book carefully. 所以我们要向 Sanatana Goswami 献上祈祈祷。希望他能赐予我们灵性的力量，能够正确的学习这部书籍。We should have good faith and be very responsible as trying to study this book. 我们要对他满怀信心，并且在学习这部书籍的过程当中认真负责。So. We have. To, we may question how would how is it possible Sanatana Goswami could bring the main teachings from many different books into one book. We may question this question. How could Sanatana Goswami bring the main teachings from many different books into one book? We may question this question. How could Sanatana Goswami bring the main teachings from many different books into one book? 
So we should understand that for many years he, he studied all the scriptures and he... And in his heart, he was meditating on devotional service. And he was guided and protected by the Lord of Consciousness. Which means Krishna's expansion as the super soul or Lord Vasudev, who is in the heart. So because Sanatana Goswami was meditating upon the super soul, the Lord in the heart, Lord Vasudev, he got the full mercy of the Lord. So he got the full mercy of the Lord and he and to understand all of his transcendental activities as Lord Krishna. He could witness Krishna playing the flute and Krishna's charming body bent in three places. And by the mercy of Krishna, then Sanatana Goswami could fix his attention on Krishna. And he could understand the purports of all these different scriptures. Another way in which we could understand the situation is that Lord Krishna is now performing his Sankirtan mission. So we get the complete mercy by meditating intensely on his all-attractive form. And Lord Chaitanya, of course, was dressed in the saffron robe of a sannyasi. Or we may, we may think about Rupa Goswami, who was a very dear servant of Lord Chaitanya. And he was working in devotion with his brother, Sanatana Goswami. So Rupa considers Sanatan, who was his older brother, he considered him to be his guru also. But Sanatana Goswami, he gives the credit to Rupa. To his, Rupa Goswami helped him on the way to come to love of God. He found out the way to develop love of God, the essence of all spiritual truth, only by the mercy of Krishna and by his pure devotees. 
，找到神爱的呃，以及找到灵性真理的核心的方法。只是只是透过 Krishna 以及 Krishna 纯粹奉献者的仁慈。So Sanatana Goswami prays that the Vaishnavas will hear this very confidential scripture. Sanatana Goswami 祈求 Vaishnava 们能够聆听这部至为机密的经典。The the book in this it, they say Sanatana Goswami wrote the book in such a way. That he had Jaimini Rishi speaking it to King Janmanjaya. Sanatana Goswami 写这部书的呃，这个线索是 Jaimini 向 Janmanjaya 国王来讲述。And then mood is in the enthusiasm of pure love. 他怀着满腔热忱。So we said this book is not fiction. It's it's based on the knowledge of the scriptures. So we 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 say this book is not fiction. It's it's based on the knowledge of the scriptures. So we say this book is not fiction. It's it's based on the knowledge of the scriptures. So the purpose of the book is not just to entertain us, not just to tell a story to us. This book is not fiction. It's it's based on the knowledge of And it's not just to give a message about being pious that we should to try to teach us that we should be very pious. It's not for that. And it's not just to give a message about being pious that we should to try to teach us that we should be very pious. And it's not just to give a message about being pious that we should to try to People who read the book with faith and they want to enter into the path to perfection. His purpose is to help people achieve complete faith and enter the perfect path. And the meaning of the title Bhagavad Amrita means that this book is made up of the most relishable things from other scriptures. 呃，这部书的标题，呃，把，嗯，大佛教堂甘露，这个意思是，意思是让人们能够品味到所有其他经典的甘露。And we will learn everything about devotion to the Supreme Lord Bhagavan, and as we go on reading the book, we will see how relevant that title is for this book. However, Sanatana Goswami says only the Vaishnavas, only the devotees of God, should read this book because if they're not devotees, they won't understand it. 然而，萨那那的高沙弥警告说，只有 Vaishnava， 也就是神的奉献者们才可以阅读这部书，否则的话，他们是不知所云的。So that this is the compassion of Sanatana Goswami on people who are not devotees. 这实际上是是萨那那的高沙弥对那些非奉献者的一个怜悯的表现。People who have who don't like to do devotional service for Krishna. Their hearts are very impure. 不喜欢为主 Krishna 从事奉爱服务的人们，内心非常不洁。So they will, they will not believe what is spoken here. They will, when they hear it, they won't believe it, and they will act in an offensive manner. 他们即便聆听了，也会也不会相信这部书的内容。So when we call somebody a Vaishnava, usually it means somebody who is initiated into the worship of Krishna. 嗯，通常我们所指的 Vaishnava 是那些在
But here, in this case, it's more than that. It doesn't just mean you're just an issue. It means that you have actually got a taste for hearing about Krishna. Yeah, they have a taste for serving Krishna and reciprocating with Krishna and they find nectar at the lotus feet of Krishna. Okay, so we will stop here today. We'll go on to next time. Are there any questions from last week? Uh, yes. Uh, last week there is a question. Yes. From the evening class. Uh, if we don't have the, a sense of security, uh, we don't easily trust others. Uh, can we, uh, uh, by, by the process of chanting, uh, can, can we in, uh, increase our sense of security? Can we become more, can, can we have more faith on others? Can, can this obstacle be removed as we chant? Well, as we chant, we will have more faith in Krishna and we will trust in Krishna's protection. Krishna includes also Krishna's devotees. So if the devotees are pure devotees, they will also protect us. Krishna也包括了Krishna的纯粹奉献者，也会保护我们。嗯，嗯哼，Yes。嗯，下一个问题是李平，顶拜咕噜，Krishna是自，Krishna是self，Atmarama，Why？ self-satisfied but you have to understand that Rukmini is Lord Krishna's potency she's the goddess of fortune so she's actually the property of Lord Krishna the relationship is not material, it's a spiritual relationship. You know, 
we may have a love affair and we may have a love affair with some person and we think about them and we can't sleep for thinking about them. It's very mundane material because we're thinking about our sense gratification with them. You have to understand that Rukmini is not just another woman of the material world, that she has come from the spiritual world just to take part in Krishna's pastimes. So she took her birth in that family and naturally Lord Krishna wants to bring her back to him because actually in the spiritual world she's always with Krishna. But she'd come to the world to take part in Krishna's pastimes, so she took birth in another family. So Lord Krishna is eager to bring her back to his association, because she's his eternal wife. Um, we can have a husband or we can have a wife here in this world, but we, you know, that's, it's a very temporary relationship. We won't have a, that connection again. We didn't have it before in the previous life and we won't have it in the future. But Krishna and Rukmini they're eternally husband and wife. So Rukmini had come to the material world along with Krishna to perform this pastime. So Krishna wants her to come and be his wife again. Rukmini you have, to understand, you have to understand the identity of Rukmini. She's not an ordinary woman. And she's always the wife of Krishna. Yes. Since devotional service is the method to get rid of birth, death, disease and old age, uh, is it the same for each age, uh, for, for each age yoga? Yes, devotional service. It's always devotional service. In, in, in every age, there is a chanting of the holy name can give one perfection. But in other ages, there's other processes. Just like in the, in the Satya Yuga, you can do meditation. In the Treta Yuga, you can do fire sacrifice. 
and in Dwapara Yuga you can do temple worship. But you can also do chanting of the holy names in these ages also. But in the Kali Yuga there's only the chanting of the holy name. There's no other way. So this is this the special feature of the holy name. In the Kali Yuga, no other way. But in every age there's chanting of the holy name and there's that means devotion. There's the, in every age there is devotion to Lord Krishna. The Bhagavad Gita was not just spoken 5,000 years ago. The Bhagavad Gita is eternal knowledge. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that only by devotion he can be understood. So the path of devotion, just like we see in the past times of Lord Rama, all the people were devotees of Lord Rama. They all went back to God. Eh? Okay, very good. Any other question? Hare Krishna. Good day. Mm, welcome here. 我的问题是就玩手机啊什么的well, I think because of the situation where you are, I think you have to be cautious about who you allow to come. Because you could bring the wrong person and they could give you trouble. I think you do have to be a bit careful about who you bring in because sometimes we do see place, some place they get some problem and it's because the wrong people come and then they, they, they do something, they inform other people and it brings us trouble. I think you do need to know people a little better before you bring them in. 
就是邀请人这件事情上呢，需要对邀请的这个人呢，需要做深入的了解才才比较合适。Yeah, you should have some kind of relationship with them. Then you should find out actually are they really interested or not. You don't want to just think oh give mercy to everybody. I don't think you can do that. In that, in where you are, I don't think you can take that kind of mood to just want to give mercy and let anybody come. I think you have to be careful. Hmm. So, we we bring people, at least he has some interest, and he has some relationships. Hmm. Not to just take anyone, and we give people a death. Then we give them a death. Hmm. In the area you live, we don't do that kind of attitude. 还是以小心为妙，就我不认为你你可以那么去做。嗯，好的，那我知道了，古队。嗯，另外还有一个问题，刚才讲到关于这个念书圣名的时候，呃，我们不止停留在舌尖上，而也要以不同的感官去，呃，触碰圣名。嗯、呃，因为这两天过这个，嗯、呃。嗯，朱尼坦丹丹在显现日嘛，所以我念生圣名的时候，总是不由自主的想到我们去埃克查哈的这个朝圣之旅。我不知道这种这种状态，是不是不专注啊，还是嗯，对不对？嗯，嗯，这个问题我不太懂。他上谁？上加布塔格。No, she she's thinking about the the journey to Ek Chakra oh, while chanting. Journey to Ek Chakra. <laughs> oh, well. Is it? Is it okay? Yeah. The journey to Ek Chakra. <laughs> well, well, yeah. You can for some time. You can think of that. I don't know how long you can think of the journey to Ek Chakra. <laughs> We do know there was one devotee, he was meditating on Lord Chaitanya coming and he was decorating the road and he was putting flowers along the road to make a nice road for Lord Chaitanya coming. <laughs> so you know, I don't. It's not recommended that kind of thing to meditate on going to the holy place. Rather, we meditate on the supreme Lord. We meditate on Him. We meditate and think of Him and His different features and form. 通常是不，这种冥想是没有受不不受到推荐的。嗯、呃，我们应该冥想的是至尊主本人，冥想至尊主的特点，他的形体。Don't just think about going to Ekka Chakra. You think about what's in Ekka Chakra and what places you go to see there in Ekka Chakra and think about the deities there. 嗯、呃，就是你可以冥想，就冥想。呃、uh, ，埃克查克有什么？在埃克查克这个地区里面的内容，呃，那在那儿的神像。Going to the different temples there in Ekachakra, visiting, seeing the deities, Bunke Bunkim Rai, right? Bunkim Rai is a deity, famous the deity, was originally the deity of Lord Nityananda. 在在阿克查克这地区呢，有有一个神像班克罗伊，他是主尼加南的最原初的神像。嗯。So we think about these places. These think about the temples and the deities. 所以我们想的是这些，呃，是庙宇那里的庙宇，那里的神像。嗯。So. Don't just spend the whole day meditating on the road, on on the path, on the road to go there. 
You should get there quick and then go and see all that, meditate on all the deities in the holy places, in the places of Lord Nityananda's pastimes. That would be more powerful, more purifying than just meditating on the road <laughs> to go there. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 那比如说有的人他有某种物质动机啊他念诵了但是随着他那个比如说这件事情过去之后他又不念诵了那他这种算是解脱了还是没解脱呢没解脱没没 <笑> anyway, they, they were liberated when they were chanting but they didn't keep chanting and so they went back to the material world that's Right? They do, you don't stay liberated, yeah. they fall back down. They come back to the material platform again. They were liberated when they were chanting, but then they, after chanting they gave up. Because the same thing was asked to Prabhupada about people seeing Lord Jagannath on the Rathiyatra car. That if you see the deities on the chariot, you're liberated. So does it mean everybody's liberated? Oh, Prabhupada said, yes, they're liberated. But then they have to stay liberated. They have to continue to engage in devotional service. And if they don't, then they'll fall back into the material life again. The same thing is Jaganata,这个谈车节日消失光当中, so they get the if they want to stay liberated, they have to act like a liberated soul. So a liberated soul understands he's not the body, so he doesn't act for his own sense gratification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the in the lecture, there's a lot of a lot of glorification about the holy name. Yes. Uh, so, so there are um, there are different level of chanting the holy names. Yes. So the lowest, uh, the in the beginning stage, there there's chanting with offense. Um, yes. So I heard that Shri Prabhupada said that uh, I heard in a lecture that as soon as uh, uh, one endeavors for offensive chanting, that is regard, regarded as uh, 
offense uh, offenseless chanting. 我我翻译一下，就是我听说，就是唱诵圣名，呃，这课程当中讲了很多唱诵圣名的荣耀，但是在一开始阶段呢，都是带着冒犯的念诵。但我听一个讲课里说，呃，只要是呃努力的去做到没有冒犯的念诵，那就被视为是没有冒犯的念诵。Yes, uh, you want to avoid offenses, you have to take take the. If we chant with offences, then we don't get we're not we don't get any real benefit from that. We're not going to develop love of God, and we're not going to be liberated if we chant with offences. Okay. But if we if we chant on the intermediate stage, which is nama bas, the shadow of the name, then you get liberation, and that means even. It, 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 like it said, we said today, this morning, I said that if we chant without offence, even though you may chant jokingly or you may chant un, unintentionally, but you get the benefit. And the example was there, Ajamila, that he chanted and he didn't know he was chanting the name of God or anything, but he was calling Narayan and he got liber he got freed from all of his sins. That that was the liberation. He got free of his sinful reactions. Okay.嗯，那如果就是带着冒犯，如果有冒犯的话，那不能得到真正的好处，也不能发展出神爱，也不能达到解脱。但是如果达到了中间的状态，就是南无巴斯阶段的话，就得到了解脱。嗯，就